We call them road racers, but of course they're not really racers. They're cars made for people who revel in the basic process of driving, operating controls, feeling and hearing what a machine does. The Evo 10 RS recaptures that Evo greatness from versions 5 and 6. It's light, cheap, has an interior made from melted Tesco bags, but it goes like stink. It does jumps too. AMG's on a roll just now. The C63 sticks it right into the M3's nose, and the new E63's a corker. I ran an SL63 and absolutely loved it. But if you want to trace the start of this turn, the start of AMG becoming something really great, I reckon it might be this car here, CLK 63 Black Edition. Um, I haven't driven one of these for a couple of years. It does this. Even now, three, four years after it arrived, it still feels like a very naughty car. Mr Metcalf described it well this morning. He drove it over from Gloucestershire to Wales and he said, you know what, it's the ultimate schizoid car. And I sort of agree with him. It has a sort of schizophrenia all of its own. It's just brilliant at sticking it in D and going really, really comfortably and it rides well and it's got loads of torque and it's got sat nav and a good radio. But then when you turn everything off and lock it in manual, it's an absolute monster and really, really fast. I'm running an E63 at the moment with the new 525 horsepower engine. And that car's supposed to weigh not much more than this one. You know what, this feels quite a bit punchier, this thing does. And it's ripping with character. I mean, it's so good looking from the outside. I don't want to hear any opinions on that. I just love the way it sits on the road. It's so wide shouldered. Little things like when the transmission warms up, this little gear lever, this stubby bit of aluminium on the top here, it warms up too. And it just feels nice and warm in the palm of your hand. And the noises, well, the Mercedes 6.2 litre, sorry, V8, forget the badging, is still one of the great engines. Believe me when I say that these two belong in the same picture. That's right, a 25 grand Renault and a 110,000 pound Porsche belong together. The Megane R26R feels nearly as special as the Porsche. It's got a carbon bonnet, fixed bucket seats, a slippy diff to drag you from the turns and enough cred to be, honestly, the most exciting hot hatch ever made. One day, when I'm old and grey, and my grandchildren are messing around around my feet, I think I'll remember certain cars that I drove, and I think I'll always remember the first time I drove a 430 scooter here. It just had an immense effect on me, because I didn't believe that Ferrari could really do a car like this. And they did, they did it so, so well. You see, I thought the scooter here would just be a slightly cynical, a bit faster, a bit lighter, but a lot more expensive version of a normal 430. But of course it wasn't. The moment you got in it, you could tell from the lack of carpets, from the specification, over 500 horsepower and yet so light, you could tell that they'd really gone to town on it. 
but the systems, the systems were something quite new and, and the 458 Italia really is just a continuation of what they managed with this car. They got their clever F1 track, which was a clever traction control system, to work with their EDIF, which was their ever-changing electronic differential. They talked together, they got a software package that could actually work and the results were stunning. And I remember watching Mark Genet in real time driving the car around Fiorano as we watched the different graphs moving around. It was very impressive. What about it now, a few years later? God, it feels just as special. I can see why these things are now quite a bit more than early 599s, because it's such a special car. There's really nothing else like it on the market, and it's proper fast. It makes a bit of a noise too. 